Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Elden Ring. I'm your host, Colors Fade. It's episode one. This is a game that probably many people on my channel will not expect me to put on the channel, but it is a game I have fallen in love with. Even the music is fantastic, right? So I thought what I would do is start a new game to play a class that I have wanted to play but haven't played yet. And you all can tag along and watch the series. And if it doesn't do any numbers and nobody's interested, then I'll just take it offline and play it by myself. But I've been having a blast and I thought one of the cool things to do would be to share my enthusiasm for the game with the rest of you. And especially for those of you, if you're unfamiliar with the Souls franchise, or you're unfamiliar, you think you'd never play Elden Ring, but you might want to watch somebody else play it, I'm going to play it, and I'm going to treat it like any other video on my channel. I'm going to describe everything as I go. So let's get started. I have played through the game twice now as a character that is basically a battle mage, a sword sorcerer, uh, using weapons and sorceries. I love it. It's my favorite style. You all know from from all the role-playing games that I've put on the channel that I love battle mages. But I've been wanting to play something a little different, which is my other favorite Dungeons & Dragons character is a paladin. That's what I love to play when I was playing EverQuest and EverQuest 2. And they have that here. It's The starting class for it is basically the Confessor. Now, you can also do a Prophet. And if I hit the F key here, you can see their stats. This won't mean anything to you if you're new to the game. But the Faith score is what you use to power your Faith spells. Whereas Intelligence is what you use if you're going to be a Sorcerer. So I'm going to build a Faith character. They get different starting stuff. You can see this thing right here is a talisman, which you need to use. You have to have in your hand to cast faith spells. But I'm going to start with the Confessor because I like the way their stats are laid out better. You're going to need a certain number of points in strength and dexterity to hold certain weapons, swords and great swords and things that uh, a paladin would use. You're going to need a certain amount of endurance to wear the heavier armor. And... Uh, you're going to need a certain amount of uh, vigor, which is your health, and a certain amount of mind so that you can actually cast the spells. And then everything else is going to get dumped into faith. So this starts out with a sword and a shield, which I like, and it has the little device here uh, for casting the faith spells. So I like this. This is what I'm going to start with. She's a female. I'm going to call it Crusader. And I'm very qu quickly going to run uh, through the keepsakes there there are a bunch of different keepsakes you can start the game with and and like everything in dark souls and elden ring you kind of have to go offline and research it if you're new to the game because they don't really tell you what what's going on for instance uh let's start with this the descriptions you can see up here in the top shabriri's row it, it's a talisman it attracts enemy aggression everything in the game already wants to kill you this is really only useful to have later on in the game when you're using something called a mimic tier we'll get to that <laughs> if the series goes on long enough so skip that uh, a lot of these other things stone sword keys open special locations in the game that are hidden behind a, a cloud of mist they unlock those you're going to run into a lot of these keys later on in the game you're also going to be able to buy them from certain vendors so there's, there's no reason to take that early bewitching branch is really cool it can it can take and turn an enemy to a friend and thus make it attack other enemies but it's a one use thing and then it's gone so I'm never for picking that up early. And besides, you can buy five of these later from a different vendor. Uh, cracked Pot will allow you to make like a, a flaming potion that you can throw at an enemy. But again, it's kind of like a one-time use thing. So uh, Fanged Imp Ashes. It says ashes are said to hold spirits within. And for those of you who, again, I'm going to assume most of my watchers don't know Elden Ring. Because uh, this isn't the kind of thing that normally shows up on my channel. Ashes are spirits that you can summon to help fight with you, and they make a lot of battles easier. It is Elden Ring's kind of built-in way of having a difficulty mode. I know a lot has been made about this game, and the Dark Souls games in particular, about how they don't have difficulty sliders. Well, they don't explicitly have difficulty sliders, but what they do have is devices you can use in the game to make things easier. 
and ashes are huge. Uh, spirit ashes really can make a lot of fights easier, but you're going to run into a lot of these and acquire them very quickly. So there's no reason to take the fanged imp ashes early. Uh, th this rune, the lands between rune, it says used to gain many runes. Runes are basically the currency in Elder Ring, like souls were in Dark Souls. You use them to level up and to buy things from vendors. You're going to run into tons of these. This is not a big deal, so don't pick that. The Crimson Amber Medallion is a pretty good first choice because it increases your maximum hit point and it's a talisman you can wear. Now you're going to run into other talismans and later on, and the thing is later on you're going to run into way better talismans and you're just not going to wear this one. So while it's a good starting thing to have, it quickly outlives its usefulness. So I'm going to grab the Golden Seed because this helps you... Uh, it, it, it enhances your sacred flasks. Your flasks restore hit points and mana, and you're going to use those all game long. And the more charges you can have, and the more that they replenish, the better. The golden seeds allow you to have more charges of them. So I'm going to grab this one so that we can get more charges sooner. And that's what we're going to do. Everything else about it, uh, I'm going to go in here and customize her appearance real quick. And then we'll get on with it. Alright, she's ready to go. So, we are on our way. Oh. Never mind. Back, back. Okay, here we go. Finish. We got our Crusader. I've just been having a blast with this game. And I never ever thought I'd be a, a Dark Souls style of person. Every Dark Souls game has an intro like this. And I thought someone on Twitter had a really cool comment about this. The great Elden Ring was shattered. About how in every From Software game they always show you the end game villain right at the very beginning of the game. And he's like, I'm, I'm so surprised they get away with this, but they do. It's an incredibly cinematic world. Uh, now, Queen Marika the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. That's an important point. We'll talk about a little bit about that because it's kind of really important. Horalu, chieftain of the Badlands, the ever brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion. The loathsome dung eater. And Sir Gideon Othmir. The all knowing.
whom grace would again bless. Can that be you? A tarnished of no renown. Cross the fog to the lands between. It's a very interesting thing. Stand before the Elden Ring. What From Software has done with their with their games, with their design, um, and become the Elden Law. With the Dark Souls franchise, and now with Elden Ring, which is basically an extension of Dark Souls, they've baked death into the game. It's 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 not a bug; it's a feature. And we as gamers are so used to dying being bad, especially if you come from old school role playing games like I do. Uh, you don't want to die, and you certainly, if you die, then you have to get a character resurrected, and that resurrected, and that's costly and a pain in the butt. Um, so, but what they've done is they made de death is an actual part of the game. You're going to die. It's not bad. You have to stop thinking of it as a bad thing. Okay. You can read these little messages. Now, what I'm doing is I'm playing the game in what's called the offline mode. So the only messages are going to be permanent messages baked into the game, coded into the game. But players can leave other players messages if you're playing in the online mode. We're not going to do that. But uh, and, and so here we go. Here's starting area. I've got my sword. I've got this and my shield. You can stick that up and parry with it. Um, well, you can't parry with this one. So here's your equipment menu. I've got my sword. Actually, it does have parry on it. Okay. And then we got the finger seal, which is for incantations. We have to get to a site of grace before we have any. We have one spell, urgent heal, you can see. So if I swoop, yeah, you can see if I, if I click on over and put this seal in my left hand, now I can cast this spell, this healing spell. And then I can, that's the parry move. But I am the worst parry player in the history of Dark Souls. I, in fact, I finished Dark Souls 3 like uh, this last week, uh, which is really fun. And unfortunately for me, uh, also just horrible. This, I'm trying to remember something. Is there anything over here? I don't think so, but yeah, there's nothing over here. You're always looking for those little shiny things like we saw. You want to pick those up. It's always something. It's some kind of loot, and you always want to pick it up. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to get our butt kicked by this enemy. Now, it is possible to beat this first enemy if you're really, really good at the game, which I'm not. <laughs> so, you know, all I've got is a sword and a shield. When you block, that green bar is your stamina bar. It gets used up for moves. Uh... You're gonna see real quickly how how badly I am at this, but and there it is. And I've got no ranged weapon at all, so and then it's gonna do crazy stuff like that. Try to get out of the way. Oh. And then we're dead. <laughs> But you're supposed to die, really. Well, so here's the thing. You actually can't get off this first little island you're on. You cannot get off of here without dying. This led to some interesting debates from the online community about people playing what they call no death speed runs through Elden Ring. And people are like, well, you can't get off the first island without dying. So technically, it's not no death. And everybody's like, dude, it's a speed run. And they're not dying for the whole rest of the game. So just... Just take your technicality and toss it out the window. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Everybody knows you, you can't get off the first island without dying. And so that first enemy, um, and actually, you know, later on when you have a weapon that can 
they can do some damage. They're, they're not, I mean, they're always kind of awful, but they're not too bad. But that's kind of what the Souls games are, is you've got to learn the move Don't set worry, of the Dora. enemy. Fortune is on her side. And learn how to take advantage of the holes. We found her here after all. Torrent's a good horsey. One of her kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. Yeah, so the, the game bakes the dying. Even if it does violate the Golden Order. It bakes death into the story as in you are tarnished. When you die, you don't really die. You come back to life at a sight of grace. So it's not only baked into the gameplay, it's baked into the story. And that's what they do for all of their Souls games. Um, at first, I was kind of like everybody else. You kind of get put off by getting killed by things. And you can feel frustrated. And you can, and too many, a lot of people rage quit these games and things like that. And they post videos where they absolutely go nuts about um, just being angry at them. But once you learn that, that the death is part of the game, it doesn't get too, too bad. See, so that's what we didn't have while we were fighting that first enemy. We didn't even have our flasks. <laughs> so your flasks in your inventory as part of your equipment you have you start off with four flasks and here's a message it says the cave of knowledge lies below so a lot of people miss this this is actually the training tutorial area jump down the hole ahead and so it appears in a recent update they've they've uh, they've put that up there so people won't miss it because everybody would just see these stairs and go running for it um, uh, these little golden trees here you'll often find a little golden seed by them so in this case, you do want to do what they su suggest and just drop down here. And yeah, you're going to take uh, a little bit of damage, but you're going to find your first sight of grace right away. And this is where you can, st yeah, it says you can rest. Your hit points and your FP and all your flasks refill, but all the enemies except for bosses that you've killed and sub-bosses uh, respawn. There is a, a usefulness to that, though, and that it allows you to farm enemies for runes so that you can level up. Uh, because this, this game has one of the most interesting mechanics I've seen. So your lock-on makes a little dot on him. You actually can sneak up behind critters and uh, kill them with backstabs. And sometimes you won't be able to kill them because they simply have too many hit points, but... So if you can't, sometimes they move around like that and it's hard for me to get a backstab on them, but yeah, guarding. So they're going to tell you about this stuff. I'm not going to crouch, but on a lot of these enemies, especially the early skeletons and stuff like this, but you'll find miners and things later on um, that there are a lot of critters in the game that are actually kind of slow to move and give you a chance to to backstab them and not get hit and it's really useful for going through certain kinds of dungeons where uh where you'll end up with some talismans to where doing critical strikes like that like backstabs will give you uh, hit points and mana back if you're wearing these talismans and it ends up being really useful because you can get through a long way through a dungeon with those talismans on sneaking around and making critical hits so that's it's nice that uh that, that not all of the enemies are absolutely frenetic killing machines you can two-hand a weapon if you want to Let's spin around this guy He's going to attack me. The spear thrusters always give me the most trouble. Yeah, like that. Because they're so quick with it. There we go. Broke his guard. So that's what you got to do on guys that have shields. Is find a way to break their guard. And there's some really good ways to do it later in the game. He saw me sneaking up. He's 
is going to do a second swing and try to get around him. That yeah, didn't work. So, and then there's this guy. Crossbow man here. So if you time your dodges correctly. This guy who was shooting at us with the crossbow on top of here is dead now. Skills. Armaments have skills. So we can do this. That's our parry skill. But if we go to two hand this thing. Ah! Didn't want. So. Like that. So it's very nice. You get these extra skills on your weapons. And you can actually. Um, you can actually later on learn how to change those skills on a lot of different weapons. Now some weapons come kind of hard coded with their skills on them, which is really cool too. But being able to change, they're called Ashes of War, but it's really just these special weapon arts. So he's dead. Yeah. There's actually not a lot of places in the game where there's cover like this that you can sneak around. part that I miss is there's a talisman and you only start out with one talisman slot right here that's where if we'd have taken that hit point talisman it'd give us more hit points but there's two talismans you can get that allow you when you make a critical backstab like that or a critical front attack uh, you get hit points and mana back and I really like those so this is just the first little starting area yeah so here's a jump attack that was a this is a really good point it's taken me a little bit to learn how to do this, but you gotta jump. So you gotta come in here, you gotta jump and... Oh, not like that. Like that. You gotta... On the keyboard, you have to hold shift and left click to do a strong attack, but when you're doing it jumping, it does like that. So it's called a strong attack and you have to do it while you're jumping. This is the one time when having a controller would be a little bit easier for the way things are, but um, it's Stake of America. When you die, you go to the last side of grace or this thing. Uh, a lot of times this is closer, so. But yeah, it, controllers, they have, you'll hear everybody on the internet talk about the move sets for weapons and things and they'll be like, this is the R1 attack and this is the R2 attack and, and uh, I don't have that on a keyboard. Uh, and, and don't tell me to get a controller. I'm worse with them. So believe me, I am. I just wish I could pull off the attacks a little bit. But, but I've, I've got a new mouse coming that has multiple mouse buttons. So here comes this goon. Guard counters. Yeah, so if we want to try to parry him. Oh, and that didn't work because he had used this long move. Ah, I tried to parry him there, and I, st I sink at it. I stink at it so well. I'm so bad at it. He's just a standard soldier, so. Oh. There we go. We'll get the backstab on So now he's done. So he's your first enemy that you really get to kill. Gives you, ch gives you an idea what it's like to, to fight somebody a little... A little stronger in the game than those skeletons who are letting you easily backstab them. And then you come back out here. That's uh, an emote. You can go over here and you can do these emotes. And what's funny is, I'll, for the most part, this is useful for player versus player, which I don't do. But there are actually a few places in the game when you're just playing the game when you need emotes to trigger things. And it's... It's really cool to me that they added that into the game. So it's not strictly a player versus player thing. There are some emotes you need to find and use in specific places to unlock content. And I like that a lot. It, it's just the thing about Elden Ring and the Dark Souls games in general is they're very, they don't hold your hand. They're very mysterious. And you got to figure a lot of stuff out. And sometimes figuring them out can be really, really hard. So you, if you're like me, you're just going to spend a lot of time on Google looking stuff up this is the first place i was talking about with the stone keys is one of the early items that is one of the choices that you can select those keys allow you to unlock these 
misty areas and get into like extra dungeons and stuff like this. This is a, 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 a little bit of a tricky dungeon. We don't have a stone sword key. See, he's going to reach in his pocket. She is, and she's going to be like, I don't have it. Tarnished furled fingers to write a gold summon. So this is for cooperative mu multiplayer. If you're playing online, which I'm not going to because I don't want to deal with all the invasions and all this other stuff that has this whole finger scenario going on. Don't worry about that. We're about to get to the really cool part of the game now. So here's our crusader, the confessor. You must confess to your sins and be cleansed. I love the art style of the game. I love the music. And this, of course, they know how to make an entrance every time you come into a new area. It's like, holy crap. Are you kidding me? It's just impressive. <laughs> Welcome to the lands between. Specifically, the sub-area known as Limgrave. Which is very wicked. And you'll get your first... Sight of Grace, and you'll meet your first NPC. Grace exists to guide the tarnished along and lead them along the proper path. And you can see that on the map. You'll see where it's pointing. It wants us to go in this direction. One of the really cool things is you can get, uh, you can unveil this map by finding map fragments. They're usually along roads, and there'll be a little symbol where the map fragment is, so they're never hard to find. It's the one thing in the whole entire game that they actually kind of make easy for you. Oh yes, tarnished are we? Yes, we are. Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring. Mm -hmm. Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. What are you talking about? I am a maiden. Without the strength of runes. Yeah, without the strength of runes. Without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Oh no, that's not me, mister. So here's one of the really goofy things about the way From Software does their dialogue trees. The dialogue ends, and you think, oh, it's over. No, you have to keep doing this. Hitting the button. There is one shining Why the dialogue doesn't just continue, I don't know. Take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace? The golden light that gives life to you tarnished. You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace. The path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. Grace's guidance will reveal the castle Stormvale, over on the cliff, the home of the decrepit demigod, Godric. He's a pretty cool idea as far as villains go. So he wants you to go up there. Um, and you just Time you, set off, I should think. you have to keep hitting dialogue options until you get on the cliff <laughs> where Grace would guide you if you seek the Elden Ring, maidenless as you are. Yeah, so we're done with him. So what happens is everybody comes down here and they see this Oh, we're gonna grab this. Summoning pools, but we don't have any yet. So here's our summoning effigy. They see this big guy on this horse. And they think, oh, right, first Elden Ring boss, I should fight him. And then they spend an hour and get frustrated and rage quit. You, you sh you're actually not meant to fight him right now, unless for some reason you're just super elite. So don't even worry about it. Every now and then you'll find little glowing things, ruined fragments, not a big deal. There's a, a goat running by. A sheep. Not a goat. A goat and a sheep aren't the same thing. So here's your first side of grace, and you're going to... I mean, it's not your first, but it's like your first major one. 
It's cool because there's a vendor here. There's a place to smith. Strengthen armaments at a smithing table. You get your first smithing stone. And so uh, we're not going to use that right now. You get a first vendor. These guys are always sitting here with these strange things that remind me of fishing poles, but they're not. He's gonna s so we're going to talk to our person who's going to, and now we're no longer going to be maidenless. You can instantly travel to any site of grace that you've already discovered. But you can't do it if hostile enemies are nearby. Oh, and our person didn't show up. Okay. Oh, no, I know which site of grace she's at. Okay. So we're going to go find our person who's going to make us not maidenless anymore. And on the way there, we're going to fight a couple of dudes. Because, you know, why not? He can't get through my shield because he's just a lowly plebe. These skulls, the, well, the glowing ones, you can hit those and you can pick up runes, golden runes. They come in different powers and different strengths. But So one of the first items that you can start the game with was a golden rune and that's what I was saying don't choose it because you're gonna run into hundreds of them and it's no big deal this guy we're just gonna get some free rune experience on our way to the site of grace where the story kinda takes off what story there is in this game that's a thing to keep in mind here is that and we wanna go in that cave trust me you wanna explore everything in this game but now that I've been through it a couple times. See, he's got that delay in there. Oh, and then I, I miss it up. Uh-oh, and he caught me on fire. Alright. Fine, punk. I'm gonna be done with you. One of the things that I learned to do was uh, I'm way better at at dual wielding than I am using a shield, but I want to learn how to use a shield and I want to learn how to parry. So you may have to watch me struggle with some of that. This guy, I'm gonna try to make an easy work out of him. There we go. Some kukris, which you can use kind of like a throwing dagger. So when you hear that noise, that little dinging, that little... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. That's okay. It's these things. So what you want to do is, um, some of these will give you things, so you have to kill them before they run away, and others will not, and they'll just replenish your flask, so... Get him. You got a couple of seconds. Teardrop scarabs. Crimson and cerulean. So the red ones replenish your health. Potion because it's the red one. And the blue ones replenish your, your FP, your mana potion. Uh, and so all that's going to do is see it goes from one to three, which is nice. But some of them, a lot of them, will actually give you items, which is really cool. Because they'll give you things like uh, ashes of war and other stuff. So I'm just gonna, just gonna try to get some easy experience here before we make our way over. There's one more guy down here. And there's a glowing skull. So we'll, there's a deer who's gonna pay us no mind. This guy's gonna turn around. Can I sneak up on him before he turns around? By Jove, we can. Okay. All right. These runes help us level. I like to hang on to my runes until um, I'm really close to level, and if I'm like a few hundred points away, or or later on in the game when it becomes a few thousand, then I'm like, okay, let's use a rune to push me over the edge so that I can level up. So what happens is you can see we're running around with 985 runes now. And what we need to level up right now is we need 829. 
So you'll get to points in the game where things are going to get really dangerous and you're running around with a lot of runes. And what you want to do is either push yourself over the edge so you can go level up and then do the dangerous thing with no runes. Because what's going to happen when you die is your runes drop on the ground right where you're at. And if it's a really particularly dangerous thing, which is usually the way you die is by nasty critters like that big guy on the wall eating you, uh, getting your runes back can be difficult. So it creates some caution there. So we're going to rest here and we're going to meet our, our maiden. The story to this game, though, is very murky, especially to me. Um, I kind of wish there was a little bit more to help. I mean, you get the broad strokes. There was a shattering. Everybody's grappling for power now. That's Waiting, basically it. Traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. Offer you an accord. Yeah. Have you heard of the finger maidens? Yeah, the finger maidens. So you'll you'll meet these. They serve the two fingers, offering guidance and aid to the tarnished. But you, I am afraid, are maidenless. You don't have a benefactor, basically. I can play the role of maiden. Turning runes into strength to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you to the foot of the Erd Tree. That we can do. Why you even have an option to refuse that, I don't know. You kind of need her. To turn runes into strength. I don't know what would happen if you rejected her. Ah, another matter. You need to get around faster. To you this ring. No. To traverse great distance. It gives you access to the horse named Torrent. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. He's quite handy. Torrent has chosen you. The wand chooses the wizard, Harry. All right, so we're going to level up. Yes, please. You don't have to do this every time, thankfully. That's kind of a holdover from Dark Souls 3. You always had to, you always had to do the touching thing. So, Vigor is going to give you your hit points. And there are... I want to explain this accurately. There are soft caps to all these numbers, meaning that there are points where you get diminishing returns at it. And there are actually multiple soft caps. So like at level 40 of Vigor, it drops off. And then I, there's another level at like 80, I think. Um, you can go online and look all these up. Uh, we're obviously going to be a faith build, and we want to poke points into faith. But also, there are some minimum requirements for weapons that I want to use down the line. And... Uh, I'll talk about those. A lot of the weapons that I'm going to want to be using later in the game, some of them have really low requirements, like 12 strength and 12 dex, which we meet, which is really cool. Some of them have requirements more in the 16s and 17s. There's a weapon called the Blasphemous Blade that I'd really like to try out. It requires a 22 strength, a 15 dex, and a 21 faith. Uh, there's another uh, weapon called the uh, Sacred Relic which requires a 14 strength and a 24 dex and a 22 faith. So uh, we're going to have to poke some points into, into these as we go. But really early in the game like this with only a 10 vigor, this is going to be one of the things we want to level up right away. So we'll do that. Get ourselves some more hit points. We confirm that. Oh yeah, we're done. Um, and now you can go to your spell memorizations. We have two spells. We have this one, Urgent Heal, so a small amount of hit points. Silence Footsteps to reduce 
and reduces fall damage sense, so that'll help us sneak up on people more if we want to use it. But that, neither one of those are fantastic spells, I don't think. And then there's the horseback riding turret from the pouch on the main menu. You go over here. So what you have to do if you're on the PC like this is you hit F to switch this, and then you select something from this list. So I select Torrets thing, and then uh, very easily that gets me Torrent. And you, yes, you can double jump. In fact, uh, you can do this while you're in midair. Press that, jump a little higher. It's very useful. Let's see. Yeah, and get off the horse. We're gonna run through some of the enemies here first off we're going to get some experience but there's also some stuff here in this camp some stuff we want to get so each one of these big huge like mausoleum carriage things um, has a weapon in the back and that's the Lord Sworn's Greatsword and that's uh, going to be fun we should probably talk about this really quick. So here, I can grab this sword. You can see right here, it requires 16 strength, which we don't have. So what that means is we can't use it one-handed. Uh, it says, well, you can use it, but you're greatly diminished. You can see how we're taking a subtraction of 54 points on the physical damage, trying to wield it that way. So we have to wield it two-handed. Two-handed basically doubles your strength. So if we go like this, now we can wield it and we don't take a penalty. And we'll do maximum damage and we can see what that's the that's the special attack there so you can see on the sword itself you can always see what the thing is it says what its special ability is stamp up upward cut so uh let's go find someone to test this on oh and here's the other thing you can see our equipment and load is heavy load this is really bad it makes it so that your rolling is really slow but i just want to show the sword off I want to see what this move looks like, actually. Because I've not been playing the game with uh, great swords at all. This guy is going to wander over here. Oh, it's not doing what I'm thinking. Okay, like that. Alright, I got it. I want to see this. I want to see this in action. There we go. <laughs> that was kind of cool. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's that's a lot of fun. <laughs> I've never used that one before. But that's... Because then they swing over you like that. They swing over you and miss you. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of fun. It's too heavy of a weapon to use right now, but I like that a lot. Actually, I think what you could do, if you got rid of that and only use this, it's it says medium load. So, this is the important thing for you to understand. Is uh, I forgot my equipment. It says medium load over here. If you're at 70% of your load, you're at medium load. If you're at 70 point one then you're over and that's when you start what they call fat rolling so here we roll quick now uh, this is this is a fun weapon I like that you can see that using that weapon skill that what they call a weapon art using that causes uh, you to use your FP so you have to replenish it with your potion so that's one of the only things that you really have to worry about here now so one of the things we could do is get back away from this guy we can go to use our seal do assassin's approach cast that spell on us and you can see the little red X goes off there so now we know we're not being penalized for this weapon we're gonna stab this guy oh and I couldn't get it off It is kind of fun. It's also it feels really risky to me. <laughs> so I'm gonna switch back to this. That that is neat though. I like that. All right. So there's a little uh, 
in most of these sites like this where there's ruins or camps or whatever, there's usually one little underground portion with a chest. You want to get away from these bats. They're a little bit of a problem early in the game. Cause we, I don't ha they're they're so easy to take down if you have a good range spell, but since we're starting as a confessor, we don't really have one. All right, so come over here. He's got his little doggy. And we're just gonna try to take that out. Ah, oh, that's not. Ah, the dog. There we go. Ah, get out of there. Oh no, 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 not the bat. And then we did. So that, that's what happens. I don't like those bats. So the bats, I think, are only there at night, if I'm correct. We're gonna go back to the last side of Grace, because it's really easy. I wanna get down into that, the underground portion. There's always a set of steps, almost always. I don't wanna say always. I've actually found a couple of sites upon dying, you will. Yeah, any runes that you dropped. So we got to go back and get our runes, of course. So I'm going to do this again. Here's the risk is that you might die getting to uh, your runes. That's always the risk. And we got to basically go back the same way we did. Because we have to get that guy away. I think the bats are only here at night. Break his guard. Get him dead. There we go. So you have to keep an eye on your green bar, your stamina. Because every weapon swing you saw drags that down a little bit. And if you run out, then you can't... Oh. And blocking, of course, consumes a lot of stamina. Guys with spears, though, are, and, and a shield are super defensive. I have a really hard time with them. So, There's our runes. So 791. That was a nice chunk. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to use these to try to toss at this guy. There we go. Get him over here. All right, now I need his little puppy too. Oh, look, there's a whole gaggle of guys over there. Jeez, man, there's a bunch of them. I wish I had a, this is when it's nice to be a sorcerer. There's a spell that can take all those guys out in one shot. <laughs> uh, let's do this then. Here we go. Always get your potions back and ready. That's one thing that's taken me a long time to get good at. And I'm still not very good at it is scrolling to my potion and having it ready to go. Oh, that killed the dog outright. That's pretty impressive. I only have one more of these. Uh oh. That was the wrong thing to do. Yeah, I got this guy. Okay. Now here comes this guy. This is almost when I'd like to switch to that other weapon. That big great sword and just kind of mow down through him. There we go. Got him to turn. So that's always nice. Oh, and picked up a smithing stone. I don't think you can sneak up on wolves, but... I don't think you can backstab him. <laughs> you can't backstab him. So here's what I'm talking about. There's the stairs. You can hear the guy in the big armor, the big baddie. And you can come down here and get your first fancy little item out of a treasure chest. So here we go. With a whetstone knife, you can use Ashes of War to grant your armaments new skills. This is the first one, Storm Stomp. 
and the, and you get the whetstone knife. So this will allow you to start changing the ashes of war on your weapons. The ashes of war being on this weapon, it says square off is what it is. And then the other one we saw was the uppercut with the great sword. Um, so some weapons you can change the ashes of war on and some of them you can't. And that's, uh, that's the way it goes. All right, so here's our second side of grace. I'm going to go turn this on, and then I'm going to go get this other weapon. There's a there's a way in the game to get a whole bunch of runes really early, which a lot of players do, and and it's not really a cheat because what it is is uh, From Software has put these kinds of little things in the game for you to find and exploit on purpose. That's what they want to do. That's what they want you doing, so. It's intentional. Right, so that guy's done. Let's go get this guy. Oh, pillage corpse. Sometimes you can be. Yeah, so there's a Greaves. There's the first piece of armor we can get from these guys. They'll drop a whole set. If you uh, have the patience to farm them all out. I'm going to go kill this guy, too. And then we'll go get this weapon. And he's dead. And did he drop anything? Just bolts. But you can you can actually get the whole outfit that they're wearing. So here's the second weapon. And this what's nice about this weapon is it it has a really nice proc on it. It does bleed damage. So it's a big old flail. And uh, it says right there, passive effects cause blood loss buildup. Blood loss causes a percentage of the enemy's hit points to go away. It's not a flat number, it's a percentage, which is pretty damn awesome. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to run down to this side of grace and level up. And I may start poking points already into... Uh, strength so I can wield that great sword because I'm I'm let's see what I'm gonna want to have by the end of the game that's the best way to know is what you, what you actually really gonna want and my apologies for cutting off the video right there I went off to pause the game to go look at the internet to check some stuff out and I forgot to unpause it on the way back but we were at the end anyway 52 minutes so as always if you folks dig the episode Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, see my Patreon, it's listed in the description below, and listen to Lucy howl her way into my good graces. Oh my goodness, somebody needs to play. See you folks. Thanks for watching.